how to be confident, elegant, and poised when speaking. The power of human speech. The only instrument that can start a war or say, I love you. Ladies, I am going to take you through 10 points that will help you become confident, elegant, and poised when speaking. Let your speech take you in the right direction. When it comes to communicating, what we're saying may be as important as how we say it. Each of these points is absolutely essential to improving the way you communicate in a variety of settings, whether it be giving a public address, a job interview, or speaking with friends in more familiar settings. Ladies, welcome back to my channel, Woman of Elegance, a platform that I've created to help women across the globe become better, more refined, and elegant versions of themselves. Without further ado, let's get straight into the video. The first point is don't fill silence with nervous chatter. When speaking, especially with somebody that we don't know well, there's a possibility that the conversation could run dry. This happens. This can be quite awkward. So to help ease that awkwardness, we might tend to fill in the long, gruelling silences that seem to go on forever with irrelevant speak. Please be advised that you don't have to take responsibility for awkward silences. If you do, you might find yourself rambling about things to no end, and this is definitely not an elegant thing to do. Elegant women are intentional. They don't do or say things just for the sake of doing it. If you find yourself in the midst of an awkward silence, the following tips could help. Avoid asking closed end questions, questions that merely require a yes or a no response. If you ask, did you have a nice weekend? They could easily say no and that's the end of the conversation. It was probably dead already, but at this point there is no chance of a redemption. Instead, you could say, how was your day? What's been going well for you? This will get the person to open up more. Oh, so you like poems? Yeah. A better approach would be, oh, you mentioned that you started writing poems again. What's your favorite poem and why? This will inevitably require a lengthy response and this can help fill in the awkward silences. The second piece of advice is to don't start spilling all the details about your personal life just so you can get the conversation flowing. If you do this, you could end up embarrassing yourself or say way too much. Get the person to open up more about themselves as people generally enjoy speaking about themselves. You can do this by trying to establish common ground. The third piece of advice is to backtrack to a previous topic. As you're both familiar with this topic, it's easier to talk about it without sounding like you're speaking just for the sake of it. Ask questions related to that subject and you're likely to get a conversation flowing. However, with everything, don't force things. Be natural and look for cues. Be discerning, and if it's time to end the conversation, do so and take your leave. Point number two, stand tall. Whether we like it or not, our body language influences how people perceive us. How we walk into a room, how we stand in front of an audience, and how we greet people speaks volumes to our observers. Posture is one of the first things that people notice. If we slouch, we risk conveying that we're nervous or even unprepared when we're giving a public address. When speaking, hold your head high. If you can, keep your back straight. You will immediately look confident. Keep your shoulders back. If they are hunched, you may give the impression that you're filled with dread or you don't want to be there. Even if this is how you feel, ladies, try not to let it show. There are a few ways in which you can do this. Keep your feet towards your listener to show that you're actively engaging with them. Avoid keeping your hands in your pockets and behind your back and avoid fidgeting. If you cross your arms across your chest, you may give the impression that you're closed off and not receptive to what is being said. Point number three, look people in the eye, don't stare. What you do with your clothes and your hands and your hair, it really conveys, 
deep meaning when you're conversing. However, your eyes send the strongest messages and failure to maintain good eye contact with your conversation partner can risk jeopardizing your ability to get your ideas out and to build strong personal and business relationships over time. If you don't maintain eye contact, especially when you're speaking with, let's say, a subordinate or co-worker, you risk coming across as aloof and disinterested. You may risk appearing as if you have better things to do than to fully engage in conversation with the person in front of you. On the other hand, when you stare incessantly, you could risk intimidating the person and it is a little bit bizarre. Focus on your partner and let your eyes convey this. It's been said, the eyes never lie. Here's a tip, when you're speaking to somebody, don't look around as this will show that you're not focused on what the person is saying and ultimately it conveys that you don't really find them interesting. Granted, getting the right amount of eye contact can be tricky. Too much is a little intense, too little and you're not focusing, so be balanced. Check this video for clever tricks on how to do this after you finish watching this video, of course. Point number four, take your time. There are a number of benefits that stem from speaking in a slower, measured pace. However, for the sake of time, I'm only going to go through a few of those. When you speak slower, you appear in control of your emotions because you're not muttering a thoughtless diatribe. You take the time to think and collect your thoughts before proceeding. Secondly, your words hold more weight because there are fewer of them. This will give listeners more time to absorb what you're saying. You also leave them wanting more. That's a secret, ladies. When you ramble on, you bore your listeners. But when you give them less than they anticipated, they want more, as with everything in life. Thirdly, you give listeners the chance to process what you have said. And this will keep them engaged and will help them concentrate. Whereas if you talk quickly for minutes on end, listeners will disengage and get bored. Number five, this is quite an interesting one. Don't be a one-upper. What is a one-upper? This is an instance where a person attempts to tell a story or make a statement and then you immediately try to outdo their statement or tell an even better or a more humorous story, for example. This is so incredibly annoying. So if this is something that you find yourself doing, please make a concerted effort to stop this. One-uppers essentially believe that it's not possible for two lights to shine brightly, so to speak. They feel that in order for their own light to shine, they need to dim yours. For example, somebody in the group says, last year I climbed Mount Snowden. It's something I've wanted to do for years and I finally got round to doing it and I completed the summit. It was really difficult, but at least I can tick it off my bucket list. Others are listening intently and commending her for her efforts and this mammoth task that she's been able to complete. Then the one-upper interjects during the small congratulatory speeches by saying, well done, that's incredible. I know how difficult it is because five years ago when I reached the summit of Mount Everest, I almost passed out. So well done to you. Really? Ladies, wasn't that so condescending, thoughtless and arrogant? There was absolutely no need for them to make that statement. If the question arose, has anyone climbed a mountain before? Then it would be appropriate to make that statement. I don't believe in downplaying your achievements at all, but there is an appropriate time and place to do it. Remember also that there is much strength in humility. Humble people take a genuine interest in others and what they're saying without trying to make themselves look better by downplaying others' achievements. This brings me on to my next point. Point number six, show a genuine interest in the person. As I said, people generally love speaking about themselves. However, get into the habit of not making it all about you. Make it about them. How can we demonstrate a genuine interest in the person that we're speaking to? Be observant, it's all in the details. Ask questions about the intricate things that they may say. For example, she mentioned she was taught by a particular lecturer during her degree. There's a reason she mentioned that particular detail. Ask about that. 
Of course, be careful not to be intrusive, but show that you're interested in what they are saying. Be a good listener. Listen to understand and appreciate. Don't listen with the intent to respond. Pay close attention to them. Maintain eye contact and make sure that your body language conveys that you're actually listening to what's being said. Remember their name. Using their name at the end of a conversation may seem like a small thing, but it makes a great difference. If you can't remember their name, then it's probably likely that you barely remembered anything else that they said either. It's the small things that count. Ultimately, proving to somebody that you're interested in them requires giving them your full and complete attention. Finding out about their interests, their aspirations, their views, their concerns really builds bonds over time. Robust relationships develop when you're generally interested in the other person. People are not stupid. It's easy to tell if your curiosity is authentic or it's strictly for your own personal gain. Points number seven, be poised. If you are speaking in unfamiliar surroundings, poise is very important. What is poise? Being poised shows that you're in control of your feelings and your thoughts. It demonstrates that you do things in a steady manner and not easily derailed when you are thrown off balance. Have a look at this clip so you can get an idea of what I mean. I think of the parents who this very night are standing around a hospital bed, not knowing if their child will wake in the morning. And a woman actually who was sitting in the audience actually yelled out to her, where are your children, Diana? <laughs> At that moment, a hush came over the crowd and she simply looked to the back of the room and said, at school. Even and as I... proceeded to on with the rest of her speech, for which she got a standing ovation. Can you see how Princess Diana handled the situation? She didn't lose her cool. She didn't become flustered. She gave a very succinct answer. And they gave her a standing ovation after that speech. When you are poised, you are adaptable and flexible and avoid rigidity when you're speaking. You look relaxed. You look like you're in control. So ladies, how can we be poised when speaking? Practice manners and etiquette. Be aware of what the etiquette is in the place that you're in. The etiquette in Japan is different from that in the UK, for example. So do your research to ensure that you respect the culture and you don't do or say anything that inadvertently offends anybody. Give a firm handshake, introduce yourself, smile, maintain eye contact. People notice manners and they do go a long way. Keep your composure. Whether you're engaged in regular conversation or in a debate or even a Q&A segment after a discourse and you're thrown off balance because you're asked a difficult or an awkward question, stay calm. Think before you speak. Don't try and be smart with your answer. Don't be sarcastic. Don't get defensive, don't get angry. You want to show that you're in control of your emotions at all times. Your poise makes others feel comfortable around you. If you react in a hot-headed way when you're spoken to in a demeaning manner, you can really make the situation more uncomfortable than it already is. Point number eight, stop thinking about what the listener might be thinking. This is something I think a lot of people have issues with. When you're speaking, it's possible that you give too much undue attention to what your audience might be thinking. Well, ladies, unless you can read minds, this is a complete waste of time. Yes, it's possible to infer how others may feel by the way they conduct themselves. If they pull faces or there is awkward chatter or laughter, then you probably did say something you weren't supposed to. However, giving too much attention to this kind of thing is also pointless because people do things for a number of reasons, not necessarily because they're bored, but there are certain mannerisms that are associated with different people. So are you going to try and interpret everyone? Just concentrate on what you're saying. Try your best not to preoccupy yourself with what others may be thinking about you. 
Concentrate on getting your point across in the clearest, comprehensible way possible and in a calm, measured manner. Number nine, use a confident voice. The key to doing something well is doing it often. When you practice trying to come across more confident when you speak, over time, this becomes more natural. You automatically sound convincing when you do this. As the psychologist Lorena Kass said, true confidence is not thinking that you will get a great result. It's knowing that you can handle any result. So ladies, how can you sound more confident? Don't articulate a statement as a question. For example, you should say, every woman should practice good etiquette rather than every woman should practice good etiquette if you present a statement to sound like a question rather than a statement of fact then it may come across as if you're searching for approval you sound less convincing and you come across as vulnerable not great if you're trying to persuade educate or inform people number 10 ask purposeful questions. When you ask questions, make sure that they're intentional and make sure that they're well thought out questions. When you do so, you improve your interpersonal bonding and you demonstrate an eagerness to know more. And of course you demonstrate a personal interest. Don't ask questions for the sake of it or just to prolong a conversation. Also, ensure that you are by no means intrusive. Respect personal boundaries at all times. Ladies, I do hope you enjoy this video. I hope that you found it very informative and I hope that you were able to use these points to really develop and improve your conversational skills. Of course, I speak about personal presentation and etiquette, but I do think that the way we come across when we speak and when we converse with people is incredibly important. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, bye for now.